Hey guys, we got uh, Austin Forkner here. We're caught up with him out at the Viney Ranch here. Uh, you're out having a day testing and training with Rhino. And um, I wanted to just catch up with you. Saw you at the track a few times here recently, getting back into it. And, um, you know, when you had this last injury at Anaheim, I think everybody in the whole sport, collectively, their hearts broke when we saw you hit the ground. Uh, you've had it just seems like one after another. And um, it's one of those things like, not even your fault really, just yeah. racing incident happened. Yeah. Tell me about that, um, when that happened that night, like where were you at, man? It just seemed like you were really dejected. I thought, man, I don't know if he's gonna even come back. Yeah, I, I'm i not gonna say that, those, that that thought never passed through my mind, because it definitely did. I mean, I feel like any big injury for moto guys, you're always like, man, is this even worth it? Like, oh, it always goes through your head, but especially after one, after another, after another, and then literally the first race of the year this year, I was like, man, like what? Like at that point, it happened whenever I dabbed my foot, whenever I got into the, to Cameron's back wheel, it, it happened right then. I felt it, uh, you knew. I knew right then. Um, and then I hit the, I crashed and hit the ground. I was completely fine from hitting the ground. Um, but I was laying there and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I just did my knee. Um, it's hurting. And I was like, okay. And immediately I'm just like, okay, knee, six, six months. months, maybe, maybe race the end of outdoors probably all year and immediately that's going through my mind as i'm laying there and that's my first thought it's not like oh my knee hurts oh it hurts i it was like knee hurts probably acl that's six months i'm probably done for the year the and most was, painful part is mentally realizing that all that stuff you've just done to build up for yeah it wasn't really the past few injuries i've had i mean haven't hurt that bad you know collarbones or whatever you you feel them grind and that's obviously not a good feeling but like it's it doesn't it's not like they don't hurt they hurt later after the adrenaline wears off and stuff and they're like oh yeah i mean don't move it it hurts if i move it but um it's just a pain and and this was like it hurt yeah but i was like it's not even the pain it's just like it's i know the it, the pain isn't the actual pain it's the mental pain that I'm now having just from all this work all this time and now I may have just blown this whole year yeah. and one and 50 feet out of the gate we always focus on the physical injury but in my experience and I had 10 years of pro racing only two of them I didn't have an injury yeah. so I mean I've been in those yeah. shoes now where you're just like are you kidding me yeah. again it's the mental stuff that's yeah. that's the hardest and so I know you guys have been working on the rehab Charles Dow is a stud I know he's got your legs strong you've yeah. been riding I've been seeing you you look great how, how do you, you know, how do you get your mental side fixed? Because I think in moto, we're always like, fix the injury and then let's go racing. But it's like, there's, there's that mental injury also that you've got to be fixed from. Yeah, I, this year was easier. It was back in 2021. I had kind of a meltdown of a, of a, um, it was after, I think, in my opinion, it was a, like kind of a delayed meltdown from whenever I did my stomach. Cause that was a pretty serious deal. Like I, I ripped my pancreas in half. I destroyed my spleen, had lacerations to my kidney and liver. And that was, that was the worst injury I've had. It was, that was pretty scary. I was internally bleeding. I couldn't, my, it was bleed. It was filling me up and I, my, I couldn't breathe like before I went into surgery. Um, so that was really gnarly. But from that, I came back in like four weeks or in like, I guess two months. It was relatively, I really didn't have much of a super down, super bum type of, it was back and I was good. And then the next year um, in 2021, it was Houston whenever we were all the COVID rounds. And I cased that triple out in practice and broke my collarbone, just simple. But after that, and then I rode outdoors that year, 10th, 7th, 12th place guy, like bad, inconsistent finishes, crashed at Redbud, cased the leap and kind of hurt my thumb. And that was a lingering thing. Just not a, just a not fun outdoors. And after that year, I was just like, that whole year was just like, I think it was a delayed thing from this, but I was just like, not just not like I just had all of a sudden a meltdown, but I was just like, I don't even, I don't even want to ride dirt bikes anymore. Like this is, this is, what's the point? Like, it's just, this is not, I'm not enjoying anything. Nothing's fun. I'm scared of getting hurt again. That was what I was, I was scared. So then I was thinking about, and you can't think about anything other than riding your dirt bike when you're riding a your dirt bike. Well, and that's the sign, right? They say, yeah. uh, we have a sports psychologist that works with Elevate, yep. our training company. and. Uh, she says, you heal the physical injury, 
And if you are thinking of getting hurt at all in your head, that means your head's not ready. Yep. That injury mentally, psychologically is not healed. Yep. And so that's probably where you were. Yeah, and I think, I think that came, it was just a delayed thing from my stomach. Like it just happened at a later point, I guess. I don't know, but it, I was scared basically. And I had to get through some stuff that off season basically and just be like, look, this is what I like to do. This is what I grew up doing. This is what I wanted to do. Yes, injuries are part of it, but what am I gonna do if I don't do this? And it's just like, man, I had to get back to doing, having fun with riding dirt bikes. I had to bring that fun back to it instead of just being scared, basically. And after having basically that talk with myself over the course of a couple months, I was like, you know what, That's this is what I wanna do. So back to the original question, how did I get through this? It went over relatively easy just because that was, I mean, that was at the end of 2021 going into 2022. Um, so. It was, it's, you'd already I, I had just, those yeah, conversations had with that yourself mindset. And, and yeah, it wasn't like a man. Do I really, it, I, I still not saying that thought never p passed through my mind, but, um, it was, you know, the first couple days it was pretty rough and had a couple meltdowns and had a couple, had a couple crying sessions and a couple really being sad. But then I was like, all right, got surgery. And then immediately after surgery, like five to seven days later, I was back in the gym with Charles because it was like, I knew that the quicker I can get back to having a goal or having something to work towards, the quicker, the just the more positive I can make. Yeah. So w when did you make the decision to bring Rhino on? Um, Cause just today watching a little bit of stuff I saw, I was impressed in just the change in technique I've seen in you from even last year. Yeah. Um, that was just a couple weeks ago. Um, well, I was at Paula National, first race. Uh, we were in the Fox Tower. I just went to watch the first motos with Charles and um, Rhino was in the Fox Tower. We just happened to stand next to each other. We hadn't really talked. We've, I've followed him, he's followed me, whatever. We, we, we know each other enough, but we never had like a real long discussion. And he was, we were standing there and between the 250 and 450 moto, he was like, hey man, like, how you doing? How's your knee holding up, healing up? I was like, good and about to start riding here pretty soon. Or maybe I, maybe I already was back to riding at that point, I don't know. Um, and we just started talking and he was like, uh, I was like, I'm kind of low key, not hundred percent, but I'm keeping my eye out for an on the bike riding coach. I'm really happy with Charles off the bike, but I'm, and I'm happy with Robbie, but he's has kids out. He has kids now. He has his training facility in Oklahoma. He can't be out here. I'm semi permanently out here now. Like Mitch wants me out here pretty much full time now. So I need a guy out here for a riding coach. And, um, Right. We just talked for a little bit and then I mentioned that before and he was like, well, take my number. Maybe we'll, maybe we can meet up at a track, at the track for a day and just, we can see how it goes. And I was like, why not? You know, why not? Um, we met here three, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or we did a day. And then I was like, I liked everything he taught me. I like everything he said was making sense. Uh, I know Rhino's made out to be some nut but after you talk to him and he, I didn't really know him from a person, like from a, on a personal level. Um, I've heard what people said. I try not to be, I try to hold judgment for somebody that I don't know if just based off of what the internet says, especially. Um, he was cool. He was nothing, you know, he's, he's a good guy. He, he is about, he likes, he told me, hey, let's have fun. Cause when you have fun, you're gonna ride the best because yeah. you're not thinking about you know, consequences or this or that, the stuff that you shouldn't be thinking of. You're thinking about having fun, hey, I'm enjoying this. Um, he was super, super, ad, uh, he was, you know, an advocate for yeah. having fun. So he, uh, that was good. I liked the stuff he was showing me and I was like, hey, let's go to, let's go to a real track the next day. Cause this is literally like a 20 second turn track. Let me see how it transfers onto a real track. It did. And I was like, hey, let's talk to Mitch and stuff. And everybody was Charles, Charles knows Rhino and, and um, he was, Everything worked out. Yeah, it was all good. I mean, look, he's probably going to get you to try to eat liver and hearts and, you know, he's very extreme with some of that yeah. stuff, but his, his coaching on the bike is so foundationally yep. sound. Yep. Everyone that's teaching anything right is coming from what he started teaching. Yep. Right. Rhino is really, is really good. So, yep. uh, just what I, like I said, what I've seen of you, your back is now straightened out. Hips are out. Your, your look on the bike is so much better yeah. than what it was. So I'm excited to see where that leads you. Yep. You're talking about maybe Washougal yep. getting back to it. Yeah. That's what I'm shooting for is Washougal. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to get enough points to be able to do the super motocross races. We'll see. Um, I mean, really, I just, 
it's not so much like I, I just want gate drops. So an extra three gate drops um, on a more supercross style track could give us the idea. Cause like I said, we didn't get to test anything from even the, the fitness standpoint or working with Charles to see that change. We didn't get to test any of that. Now working with Rhino, I would like races, just gate drops because I've missed so many gate drops over the past few years. I just need gate drops. I need to get used to the racing nerves, the racing jitters, all the racing, just the vibe of the day, the stress that you feel throughout the day. I need that more. Um, so an extra three gate drops, yeah, I'd yeah. definitely be down with that. The money's good in it, they're paying good. So it, it just, I would really like to do those races, um, but obviously I gotta do pretty pretty good in the, if I come back at Washougal, I'd make the last four. I would need a pretty good result in the last four to be able to get enough points, I think. But, um, so that's what it's, I wanna, whenever I come back, I wanna still, I don't just wanna get back at the races and drop everything I've been learning. That's what I'm like, if I'm trying to put it in my head now, that if I have to get passed by somebody to keep my technique locked in and to keep technically sound on the bike, the things that I'm learning right now, I need to do that. So I'm trying to just lock that into my head now and already start thinking about that so that if, you know, if somebody's pushing me and I start to see myself, you know, doing those things that I used to do, like, yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. Let them buy, let them buy. It's okay. So that's it. Getting the last two races isn't the only goal. It is a goal, but, um, keeping my all the things that I'm learning and keeping that technically sound on the bike and safe and getting you know that beaten by head get the bad habits out is more important yeah. I guess so well man I'm excited to see where you go um I've been a fan of yours forever and it's like every time you hit the deck I'm like ah oh. and I think a lot of people are so yeah. excited to see you get a season healthy under yep. your belt best of luck cool. uh this summer yep. and thanks for sitting down with me yeah all right, we got Rhino here. We figured we better grab him and get a few words. Um, it was a good chat with Austin, just talking about kind of what he's been through, mm -hmm. uh, where he's at, what you guys are working on. And, and I just wanted your opinion of what you saw out of him, uh, why you wanted to work with him. Uh, you mentioned today, like, it's brought fun back to it. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess just watching him through his career, I see, you know, now working with him, I see a lot of him and me, meaning that we had the same kind of problems, meaning we had all the speed, but almost in all this will, but we didn't really have the skill to go with it. At my time, we didn't have, as you know, people, you know, dissecting us and teaching us and guiding us like we do now. So we kind of, you know, just kind of hit and miss. But that whole journey, I kind of see in him. And there comes a point where you need to change. Mm -hmm. And um, that's before I even knew the kid. We were at Paula watching the Nationals up at the Fox booth. And then I look over and he's standing right next to me. And I'm like, okay, man, never introduced myself. My name's Ryan. He's like, yeah, I'm Austin, da-da-da. And we started talking about what's going on, his knee, this, that. And I just said, hey, man, I go, we need to talk. And I go, I can help you. And I go, well, you need to just give me one day, one day. And I will go, I'll blow your mind with what I can teach you, what I can show with you, what I can, you know, uh, educate you on and how you ride this motorcycle, blah, blah, blah. We talked two more times, and then, boom, we came out to this turn track. And the first day, he's like, he's looking at me going, really, dude? Really? Like, I'm Austin, I'm Austin, I'm Austin. Austin Faulkner, you're gonna have me ride this track? And I said, come on. So we started working and doing these little drills, doing the things that you saw today. And we got done, he's like, holy shit, man. He goes, I've learned more in probably 20 minutes than I have in a couple years, you know? And he's been with some great people, some great people, but a lot of great people don't look at the things that some people need to be, that needs to be seen, right? Some people, yeah, they're technically sound, so they need to do the motos, they need to do the fitness, but most of it is really looking at the roots of stuff. This, this sport, as you know, is very, uh, is, is very, you know, I guess, is too much on watering the leaves of the trees. We gotta water the roots. It's always lap times, it's always the bike, it's always the moto, it's wearing a heart rate monitor everywhere you go, even when you take a shit, you know, and it's like, it's just overkill on that side, but nobody's focus, focusing on the little things. And that's where I'd like to see the sport change is where they have people come in and, and, and work with the riders, you know, technically. So that whole idea and, and what has made it fun for me is that when I say something, this kid looks me in the eyes and he goes, okay, and he goes out and does it. Then he comes right back and he, and he elaborates on what he feels yeah. and then we can talk. And that is super cool, you know, and I don't have to try to beg somebody. I don't have to, 
you know, plead with somebody to be serious and want what they say they love to do. Yeah. And so I can see the passion in him and I can see this fire in him. So he needs <clears throat> also someone in his corner, I feel, to, to settle him down a little bit, to guide him, to, to almost say that it's okay. You don't need to be the fastest guy every day. We need to be the fastest guy one day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everything that I didn't do. <laughs> Everything that I wasn't is what I'm trying to, you know, put into him because I feel my career should have been better with the work ethic and the speed that I had naturally. It's just it was just injury, 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 you know, and that's kind of the same thing. And that goes back to technique. A lot of times, um, I point that finger at myself. Yeah. I told Austin I had two years out of ten I did not get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and a lot of times it was technical issues. So, mm-hmm. uh, having somebody and you and I have had this conversation. I wish so badly I could have gone and talked to Johnny or Wardy or somebody Mm -hmm. who had some experience to help me. And and it certainly wasn't as refined as where we're at today, but a coach to go, "Mm, I see that you're doing this, you know, watching you closely and go, if you fix this, this will change it. And here's why. And then, like you said, he doesn't goes, wow. It it was the same thing. You know, I worked with Gary Bailey a couple of times, but it was just minor things, minor things, because we didn't, nobody came in the sport with what is happening now. And so little things, but once I felt one, those little things work, boom, it was done. Yeah. It was done. Then it was in my technique. It was in my approach. It was in my, my focus. And that's what I see with Austin. It's not like, okay, come on. Okay. Hey, it's boom. He felt something it's on. Yeah. And so that, but we didn't have that much. So now, you know, from what I feel I've brought into the sport, this new positioning that the toes, the hips, the back, the this and that has really made has really transformed the sport, as you know, because I've seen you work on your technique and these little things work. But then you have now a jet that has taken it to another level. And you can't say that he didn't learn this from, you know, what I put into the sport because I've been doing this 13 years. So and he's only 19, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah. no, this is I, and yeah. I've said that to Austin, what you teach your master class inside of Elevate, mm-hmm. our coaching app. Yeah. Man, it, it, it's. I love, I go back and keep watching it because wow, I'm like, God, thank that's, you, man. Thank um, you. I keep learning. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And that, and, and that's, and that's, that's, that's the championship for me. And I didn't win a championship in my, in my career. I came very sh- close and were you know, this and that, but to be able to hear that from somebody that look, dude, you know, after all these years listening to you and actually you were my competitor and I didn't really even like you then. <laughs> You helped me with my riding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And, and, and that, that's a blessing to me. And like I say, I'll take that championship because I can help millions of people with that than just having that number one plate on my wall that you get to yeah. come to my house to look at. Yeah. Well, here's right. to a couple of number twos. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh? Well, I'm stoked to see what you guys yeah. do together. It's it, just even watching today, it, it put a smile on my face watching you guys yeah. have a good chemistry and he's listening to you and he's putting it into practice and you're going, yeah, yeah. got it. No, I'm, 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 I'm pumped, dude, and I, and I couldn't probably ask for a better writer right now with just that mentality. You know, we, we see eye to eye. Yeah. You know, we, we, we both have that piss and vinegar, and, uh, you know, but we just need someone to kind of, and Hardest. almost like, yeah, just kind of almost chip off the little edges, you know, make us more of a masterpiece. <laughs> cool. Well, we'll be watching. Uh, keep an eye on Austin Forkner. Really going to be cool to see his comeback. Uh, should be at Washougal, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.